Hey, Major here. So today we're gonna um, I'm gonna teach you how to basically set up the EXP reset run system, which is basically here. Let's do this over some if it's on the server. Basically, um, whenever you warp somewhere, you get a EXP ball, then you reset run, and whenever you throw it, oh wait, hold on. <laughs> whenever you throw it, you get sent to the start or the best starting position for the track, right? Um, so that means that if you basically mess up and you say, "Oh no, I mowed," you can just right click with the reset run and you can restart the run. Um, so yeah, today we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to set up the system for whatever track you want. Um, today we're going to set, set it up for Red Bull Ring for FC1 2022. Uh, and yeah, let's get started. Uh, so the things that you're going to need are um, these, four uh, these four items right here, and this one is also really nice to have. Um, so you have EXP reset run, um, armor stand, which is where you're going to get teleported to. You have the, um, a command block that contains a command that would be useful for setting the system up. You have the notif armor stand, which basically gives you the arm, um, gives you the item, and also sets your ID to um, whatever ID you want for the track. Um, then this is the command that sets the ID, and then finally you have a command block that actually is very useful just in general. Um, whenever you place down the um, uh, command block, it will kill the nearest armor stand within seven blocks. So for instance, if I have an armor stand right here, I uh, face this down, it kills the armor stand, right? If I'm over here, more than seven blocks away, it will not kill the armor stand. But if I do it here, it will. And also, that also um, has to do with invisible armor stands. Um, so you can see, in spectator mode, you can see it right here. I'm going to place down the command block, and it's no longer there. It has been killed. Um, so this is just a very useful um, command block to have. Um, to get all five of these items, you can just go to uh, spawn in ABG. Um, and I left a chest inside the uh, Emerald Room, which is where all the command blocks are located for a speed reset run, right here, that has the two armor stands and all three command blocks. Um, if I can, I will try to recover the commands that I use to make these uh, command blocks, and I will put the commands in the description, um, or somewhere else for whoever wants them. Um, yeah. And also, um, I guess, yeah, if you're going to want to set this up for other servers, you should also um, have a schematic of this whole thing, uh, a whole system. So I should probably also provide a schematic file for the system that you can paste into your world. Um, be sure to um, try to keep everything in one chunk if possible. You can see that um, all the purple and green command blocks, or most of them, this one doesn't really need to be in there, but most of them are within one chunk. And um, you can also uh, force load the chunk by doing force load add and then this that adds a force load to the chunk you're in force load basically means that the chunk will always stay loaded no matter what um which is very important for making sure that the system works no matter if anyone's in this chunk or not right okay yeah so to set up the asp reset run system there are a few scoreboards and things that you need to set up um basically this is the setup tower right here so basically all you need to do is press this button here i'll uh, go ahead and show all the commands in chat uh, just in case you need to use it, or need to do them. Yeah, so basically all you have to do is run those commands in chat, um, so you can just type them out, like, you know, scroll where the add, um, and so on, or, you know, you can just press the button, that's the easy way to do it. Um, it is possible that, um, this, this tower does not include every command that I actually, that you would actually need, um, because, you know, user error, I might have messed up. Um, if there are any complaints, please leave them in the comments. Um, odds are that if um, there is an error, someone else probably already encountered it and left a comment, and I will probably uh, reply to that comment with a fix. Um, so definitely be sure to check the comments and make sure that um, you know that comment exists and that um, someone already asked for your uh, question, the same question, before uh, asking your own. So yeah, back to Rebel Ring. So we're going to setting up a system. It's a pretty fast process. Um, first, you're going to want to take the EXP reset run notif and just place it wherever, right? Uh, somewhere nearby. And then you're going to want to copy this command to TP the nearest armor stand to you. I think it's nearest, yeah, EXP reset run armor stand. Um, so yeah, you see it's right there. We're going to go ahead and warp back to Red Bull Ring so that um, whenever um, you spawn in, the armor stand is directly under you, right? So now we have the CP command, and we paste it, and now the armor stand is right under us, right? So when we do warp Red Bull Ring, um, you can see it's right under us. And also, um, generally, it's nice to, um, if you're using the Nether Cube parkour, um, 
then you should also make sure that the um, that picking the item in slash courses or slash C um, also puts you right above the arm stand. So basically, make sure that the warp and the slash, uh, slash C basically teleport to the exact same place. Um, this will give you, this will do all the good stuff uh, for anyone within one block. Um, so you can be a little bit loose with it, but I generally just prefer to be like right on top of it. Um, next, we're going to go ahead and set the ID number of this armor stand. Um, so every course has its own ID, and this can be whatever number you want. Typically, I just add one to the last one. So like, um, for instance, I'm going to put this on the sidebar, uh, ESP reset run uh, ID which is the ID number, and you can see that the latest one is 32. That's probably for Silverstone. So we're going to go ahead and paste in the command from that uh, orange command block right here um, into the chat, and then add 33, which will basically set this armor stand's value to be 33. And now you can see also my value is now 33, because my value is set to this, uh, this armor stand's value. Finally, we're going to go all the way over here and try to find the best spot possible for starting a nap, right? So if you're grinding the track and you want um, to have an optimal start every single time, um, you're going to want to find the best place to start from. Um, so I think here would be good. Um, I mean, I'll, yeah, like this requires some not, um, this requires some knowledge about uh, boat theory. Um, for instance, that this is just as good for ice building as this, but um, because it's speeds, uh, it's velocities, not speeds, but Regardless, I think that doing this would be pretty good, right? Okay, so we're just gonna, um, we can do F3C, which is uh, F3 plus C, uh, oh god, <laughs> F3 plus C, and that will basically copy a teleport command to your clipboard, right? So if I paste my clipboard, I can CP right back to where I was. So I, yeah, you can see I copy pasted it, or it's, yeah, I'm pasting it from my clipboard. Um, so now I'm going to paste down the ESP reset run arm of sand. So now you can see it's right there. Um, and then we're also going to want to TP it to us. So I'm going to go ahead and CP to where I want everyone to spawn at. Uh, typically, um, I actually make it so that the, I believe it's called pitch, is 40. This is just uh, my preferred camera angle. Um, but I think I'm going to keep it consistent for every track I do. Um, so that, um, you know, no matter what track you are, you can adjust the camera uh, however much you want. Um, yeah, from there. So yeah, I'm going to go with 40. And then we're going to go ahead and copy this, and then paste it so that the armor stand we just placed is right under our feet. Um, and then finally, we're going to go ahead and run the same ID command. So now that the uh, now the ID is also 33. And now, this has ID of 33, that has an ID of 33. And now when I throw this, I am TP'd back to the start. Alright, hey guys, uh, editing the just off here. Uh, I noticed I missed something in the tutorial. Basically, uh, at the beginning of the video, you saw that um, I had to fly over here because the bottle didn't teleport me. That was because the, um, the chunk that the armor stand was in wasn't actually loaded. Um, so basically, what you have to do, um, or what I generally do, is I take one of these force field always active command blocks that basically has this command in it, and it's always active. And you can also um, hold, uh, for Mac users, command and pick block, um, and that has the command inside it. Or you, I think it's the, I believe it's control pick block for um, Windows users. But yeah, you basically take this command block um, and you put it somewhere inside the chunk that the armor stand is in, right? So you can see that the armor stand is in this chunk, so I'm gonna place it somewhere in here. Generally, I used to um, place it right under the armor stand, so it'd be right here. But um, recently, I've had times where um, if my internet connection isn't the greatest, just by a little bit, you know, and it takes a while for, like, it takes, a, you know, 0 0.2 seconds or whatever for the world to load when I throw the potion, right? Then um, sometimes when I right click, I'll enter the command block, right? So if you're opt, this is an issue. If you're not opt or whatever, then it's not a big issue. But um, basically, I like to just put it somewhere inside the chunk, right? So I don't like to put right under anymore. I like to put it to the side, like maybe like over here. This is works, right? So now, no matter what, um, I mean, basically, when a server restart happens, you'll have to fly over here. But otherwise, you should be able to teleport over to the armor stand no matter what. If we didn't have the force load, um, if we didn't force load this chunk, then basically, if we went over here on the other side of the map and no one was over there, then the system wouldn't know that that armor stand existed, right? So when we throw a uh, when we throw a bottle, the system would kind of look for, oh yeah, where is this armor stand? And it wouldn't be able to find it. But since this is force loaded, it'll always be able to find it. Um, and that being said, though, I believe people do have to fly over here to um, to load it in load in the trunk for the first time. Um, 
generally when a server restart happens. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. Um, that's that's it. You can go ahead and um, put the server board away from the sidebar, and that's it. Um, now, whenever someone spawns in at Rebel Ring, they can just throw a reset run potion or bottle, and they can just start running. Um, whenever you want to turn it off and on, I added a um, tell raw, so you can just press this when you want to tell everyone that the system is off. You can just press this when you want to tell the system, everyone to tell everyone the system is on. Um, these don't actually turn off the levers. If you want to turn it off, you have to actually manually turn off the levers. Um, I probably could add a command block that would do it automatically for you, but I haven't had the need to. Um, so yeah, just turn off the levers, press the turn off, tell raw, um, and then whenever you want to turn it back on, turn on the levers, and press the turn on system, or uh, tell raw. Alright, so this isn't really part of the ESP reset run system, but something that could be really nice to have is something that automatically spawns a boat whenever you use an ESP reset run bottle, right? So let's say that when you use the bottle, uh, you get TP here, but you also automatically summon the boat. So instead of having to place a boat and get in, you can just, you know, get in, right? Um, so I actually do this on uh, Frostex server, uh, the Samhex server. Um, and basically, it's all with this one command block right here. Um, here's a command if you want to paste or write it in yourself. Um, but basically, it's going to check for if there's any players nearby. And if there is, if there are no boats nearby, and then we'll send the boats. All right, so we're going to go ahead and actually make a slight adjustment uh, on the spot to this command. Um, we're going to go ahead and change the execute position, squiggly, squiggly, one, squiggly. Um, to go ahead, instead of using uh, reference coordinates, we're going to go ahead and use um, actual coordinates. This will let you basically hide the command block somewhere else, right? So if you put it over here, or like this will say, you don't want it like over here, so you're going to like hide it over here or something, right? Or hide it inside a building, right? You can go ahead and do that, right? So we're going to go ahead and basically you're going to want to use your ASP use a run potion. Um, and then you're going to want to do F3 plus C, or God, F3 plus C like we learned earlier. And um, that will copy a CP command. Um, then you can go ahead and copy these coordinates um, and put them in to the command block. So I guess we're going to go ahead and do this. There you go. So now it's going to um, activate at this spot um, always, no matter where you put the command block. Um, from here, we're, go we're going to also um, change this set of coordinates right here, the 45, 96, 80, negative 298. Um, and that's going to basically be where the boat spawns. Uh, so basically, if you want to place a boat right here, um, I'm going to go ahead and get in, and we're going to look at our coordinates, right? So we're going to bring up F3. We're going to write down negative 241.997, 51, um, I believe 51, and negative 100.854. Let's go ahead and double check that. Uh, no, it's actually 52. Right, okay. So when you're sitting in the boat, the, um, it'll display as like, one less in the block, or like half a block less inside the um, XYZ. So, right, it's not half a block, but regardless, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and use this set of chords instead of this set, and we're gonna just paste them in. There we go, and that should be it. Um, it should be always active, so I think if we just use the thing, yep, there we go. Um, one more thing, there's actually um, a way to summon the boats in a direction. Um, or like facing a direction, basically. You can see that if we want to use this the way it is right now, um, basically you would do this, and that's annoying and bad, and it ruins the whole point. Right, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add one more tag to inside right here. You can see that we do type dark oak, we'll go over that in a second, but um, then we're going to go ahead and add rotation, and we're going to use the uh, square brackets. Um, from here, we're gonna go ahead and have add um, two numbers. Uh, basically the first one is where you're looking, or it's basically these two sets of numbers, or this set of numbers. Um, the first one is where you're looking in like the X Z plane, right? So like, you're looking this way, looking this way, looking this way. The second one is up and down. Um, basically the second one doesn't matter because the boat will always face basically the same way um, in the X and Y, but the first one is what we care about, right? So let's go ahead and use the HP reset run bottle. Um, in this case, we're facing negative 121.7, um, and then 40. We don't really care about the 40. So we're just going to go ahead and put negative 121.7 and F, and then afterwards we're going to do 0.0F. So basically it will just summon facing straight 
Um, and as I said, it doesn't really matter which way, like, what the second number is. We could probably change that to, like, you know, 90, it wouldn't matter or whatever. But, um, yeah. Now, you can see that it sums in and it's facing the right direction. And finally, um, something I like to do for the frost hatch server is, um, I like to make the type of boat, um, a certain, uh, or like the color of the boat, the type of wood that it uses, um, whatever the track creator's favorite color is, right? So let's say, for instance, we're using a track that I made, right? And my favorite color of boat is birch. So if you're setting this up for one of my tracks, I'm flattered, um, you would go ahead and use birch, and then you can see it sums in the birch boat. Um, you can go ahead and make sure that the T right here is capital, and then this can all be lowercase. And for dark oak, it should be dark underscore oak, not space oak. That will not work. Use an underscore. There we go. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's how you summon the boat automatically. Like I said, if you want to hide this command block, now you can. You can just put this like over here or something. Make sure that it's like, you know, nearby and that it's not like on the other side of the map or something. Um, or if you do put it on the other side of the map, make sure that's force loaded, like we uh, talked about with force loading the uh, armor stand. So yeah, now whenever I use this, it summons a dark oak boat, facing the direction I want. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think that's about everything. Uh, best of luck, hope that you enjoyed the tutorial, and hope that the system will be useful for you in your endeavors. Thanks for watching.